Okay, so today I will be doing a review on this, which is a Koi Katana from Hanway. Um, all the design, Suba is Koi, Koi on the Fuchi, Dragon Manuki. It has a uh, white cotton Ito. The only thing about the white cotton is that it will stain very easily and turn to a kind of muddyish reddish brown color but I still do like the white katana, uh, the white Ito it's it's something you don't find too often on on katanas I got the black uh, ray skin which is very complement to the the white um, black saya also very well done the blade itself that down here. the blade itself is a T10 and I don't know if the camera will pick up the Haman or the pattern on it but it is a wave pattern, or in Japanese it's a uh, notare pattern. Just your basic brass habake. The length of the koi katana from the kisaki down to the mune notch is 28 and 3 quarters inch. So it is a very very long blade. The handle or the ska is 15 inches so it is a extended handle which is perfect for uh, people who have longer arms or are taller. It allows you to get a more elevated grip on your sword when you're swinging. It comes in at a very heavy weight. It's 2 pounds 13 ounces. Uh, it is very very sharp the blade is made out of t10 which is a tungsten steel so it's very similar to 1095 but they add tungsten for the sharpness and the resilience to rusting in that um, it came in very sharp i've only had to personally touch up the edge with a 8000 grit fine stone once just to put a, a edge back on it uh, very very smoothly like just just a just ran it over a couple times just to put that edge back on it it's it's cut through bottles it's cut through uh, beach mats I even went through a Pepsi uh, aluminum can and no damage to the blade so it, it cuts very very well uh, now the reason I'm doing this review of this is for one of the uh, my YouTubers subscribers wanted me to do it and I'll give them a shout out shout out and their name was and sorry if I'm butchering this also also Dio Tria so this one is for you uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the video hopefully I'll answer all of your uh, your questions that you had about the, the Koi Katana if you were interested in buying it. Um, I bought it back 2015 or so. I've had it for a few years. It's it's one of my go-to katanas for heavier cutting. I, I really enjoy it. I like cutting with it. So uh, what I got set up is um, over here I'm gonna do some cutting for uh, three Lay's uh, stacks containers. They're very thick plastic. I have no beach mat, so I'll have to make do with bottles. I have three Gatorade bottles I'm going to cut. Those are also very thick. I have two Sunny D ones and two President's Choice Cranberry ones. They'll give you a bigger uh, look at what it can do with uh, the bigger targets so you can see the multiple cuts on the bigger targets. I think I covered everything I wanted to in this. Oh, the reason why it's a, they they went with the koi design. Uh, there's a legend that says when you 
lay a koi down, also known as a carp in English. If you lay a live carp down or koi on a cutting board, he will not move. He, he'll face death with no hesitation. Unlike other fish, they'll flop around. The, the samurai wanted to emulate that fear of no death. So they would put those koi on their katana to symbolize, try to get the, the essence of that, no fear. And the reason there is a dragon in the manuki and not a koi also is the legend of a koi fish swimming up the Yellow River and getting to the Yellow River Falls a fish or a koi that could jump that waterfall would then become a dragon. So it ties in with that legend. But like I said, very, very nice, very nice blade, very sharp, stays sharp. And you, you never really have to sharpen it. Maybe, like I said, I've only done it once and it, it was just to put that nice keen edge back on it. Very, very nice katana. So I'm gonna realign it. Hopefully these shots came out, you can see them. I'll realign it so that the, uh, the bottles are in focus. Okay, so uh, here we go. I'm going to start uh, with the lays, then I'll work to the, uh, uh, maybe the zero, maybe I'll try to do double cuts with them. They are hard to do double cuts with uh, with bottles, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully I won't get the camera wet with uh, a bunch of water. I think I'm going to get another cut out of that. And again, I apologize if this uh, video is going to be a little long. Longer than any of my other videos. So overall, I got 10 bottles. 10 bottles I'm going to cut for you guys. how sharp it is. It cuts, cuts very, very well. I'll see if I can stack two of these up and do a double cut. Sometimes they stay, sometimes they don't. I don't think I'm going to get it to stay. Just got the very bottom of it. Top of that. Do one handed. Nope. Not fast enough for that. Like I said, very, 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 very thick plastic. Top 
of it. Very thick plastic, so it goes through it no problem. Now, if you're using plastic water bottles, just make sure to clean your blade off regularly to get that water off so it doesn't rust. Uh, yeah, no damage to the blade. The edge is fine. A few scuffs, but you'll get scuffs like that with plastic. Just take a polishing rag and you'll, you'll be able to take those right off. Try not to cut to the right so that I don't get the camera all wet with the, the backlash of water. And just got it with the Kisaki. See if I could do some horizontal cuts and just take it off layer by layer.